Hello everyone, welcome back. We are going to continue rebuilding the engine of the car. In the last video we found out about the bad bearing. Unfortunately, cap number 7 was badly damaged. So um, I'm gonna continue from there. I uh, took the crankshaft and the engine to a machine specialist shop. They helped me quite a lot. I'm grateful to, to those guys. They measured the crankshaft. Uh, luckily, it wasn't damaged. They could polish out the, the damage. Also, they measured the engine. So I put back the caps without the, the bearings. And they done like three, four measurements. And it came out good. So luckily, no, no damage was uh, sustained on the caps. They recommended the uh, Kolbenschmidt bearings instead of going original, which I'm very, very happy that I, I've done. Uh, Kolbenschmidt is a very, very good brand. And I, I think the, the weak part of this engine are the main bearings, which are some very strange brand. But I'm not gonna get into that. Probably in a future video we're gonna discuss that. So as, uh, as you can see, it's not like I'm not trusting the, the engine specialist guys, but I was like uh, trying to go for sure and I, I used plastic gauge to measure the clearances. BMW recommends 0 0.025 to 0 0.065 uh, millimeters of clearance on the main caps. What plastic gauge is, is a small, small, like a, like a wire, it has a funny material. You, you put it between the, the bearings and the crankshaft, you torque the bolts down as you would do normally, two times torque than the, the angle. You remove the, the, the caps and then measure the, the result. Obviously, I'm not gonna use the, the new bolts for this because that would be just a waste of time and money. I'm gonna use the old bolts to do this uh, test. So this is the plastic gauge. One by one, you have to replace the small cuttings, as you can see. It's like a small wire which expands. It crushes, basically. The, the bearings are crushing the the material and uh, you're gonna put it against a chart which tells you what is the clearance. These are the new bearings, nice and shiny. You have to be very careful, very precise, no dust, needs to be a clean job. And of course, the orientation is very important. You cannot mess that up. It has a very, very, very specific uh, order. Not just order, but you cannot just uh, turn it around and put it 180 degrees to other direction. So as you can see, these are the old bolts uh, for the test. They are good. But obviously, once I'm, uh, I'm finished, I have brand new original uh, BMW bolts I'm gonna use for the, the bearings. This is a very slow process, unfortunately. It's a bit boring, but uh, basically this, this thing decides if, if the rebuild is gonna be a success or not. I'm not using the, the lube at the, at the moment, the assembly lube. Just putting back the, the caps dry. Obviously, I'm not going to turn the, the crankshaft. It's going to stay in place. As I said, it's a slow, kind of boring process. You measure twice and cut once, as, as they used to say. So I'm very careful and uh, trying not to make any, any mistakes. It's quite difficult because the small plastic gauge is so small and light that you do one like like the whole you shake the engine and they just fall inside the engine you have to to look for them pick them up so you have to be very careful 
this is a very very precise and uh, accurate test if you do an engine rebuild even BMW recommends this as a, as a test that's why they they have the tolerances the 0 0.025 to 0 0.065 uh, I was almost sure that uh, it's gonna be alright because the the engine specialists they they measured everything and it came out good but uh, it's a very non-expensive thing to buy the plastic gauge and it was well worth the the investment now I'm torquing down the the bolts I'm not gonna say the torquing specs now because I'm not sure which I have it somewhere written down uh, I will put it on the screen later for you I'm marking every bolt so I can uh, I can follow the the direction so I'm not leaving any of them on on torqued so I'm taking the caps off now and it's kind of the moment of truth because this decides the whole thing the rebuild I loosened uh, the bolts by by hand and then I'm gonna use my my gun obviously th there is no no tension at this point so if you guys think that it's gonna damage the the crankshaft it's not it's not vibrating at all One by one, the caps are coming off, and the measuring process starts. Let's see what, what are the results. So these bolts are done. We're not gonna reuse them. So as you can see, the plastic gauge. Uh, on some caps unfortunately stayed on the the cap side but it's not a big problem we measured the the caps uh, on all seven we had a reasonable readings so uh, basically all seven were under 0 0.050 0 0.047 0 0.043 so kind of in the middle it's not not at the start 0 0.025 but for me that would be too tight but not 0 0.065 kind, kind of in the middle uh, I was happy more than happy with with the results I'm I, I'm very confident this uh, Colbon Schmidt brand is a good reputable brand So from now on the reassembling starts, obviously now uh, I'm putting the connecting rod bearings as well, one by one. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, assembly lube on all of them and now it's show time. Every single bearing cap gets some assembly lube and the process starts again like we did with the the plastic gauge first two times uh, there is a specific torque and then uh, the the angle uh, tightening unfortunately this is my first rebuild ever this kind i've done timing chains gearboxes uh, other stuff but i never ever uh, had the the chance to to actually do a, a rebuild this you know big uh, I know there are horror stories out there that these rebuilds don't last. I'm well aware of that, guys. So I'm I'm a bit nervous. There is a 50/50 chance it it will work or not. We're gonna find out. 
one thing I didn't mention, I didn't have to go uh, over size bearings. These are the, the standard original size bearing. The crankshaft wasn't grinded, it was only polished. So cut number 7 is on the original size bearing. And despite that, I still have the similar tolerance than on the rest. The crankshaft is spinning freely. In the next stage, uh, I will put the tightening chain on, the valve cover, put the engine back, and I will attempt the first start. Obviously, I'm gonna build some oil pressure. Five, six, seven times uh, I will try to crank the engine without the injector plugs to be connected. If the engine starts, the first first thing will be to measure the oil pressure. That is a key indication of the, the main bearings. I will do a cold and then uh, after 10-15 minutes of warm, that's the plan at least. Oil uh, pressure, I bought a special tool, only, only special tool. I didn't have an oil pressure gauge, so I had to buy one. I will, I will use that. This is the first start. My head. I almost cried. I was so happy. Solid four and a half, four and a half bars, but this is cold, obviously. This is after a good 10 minutes, but it will drop eventually. I think the lowest I've seen it was 1.3, 1.2. This is what the car looks like right now. It's still very damaged. The front end needs some serious repair. I need to order bonnet. I need to order fender, headlights, grills. In the next video I will try to finish up and then uh, I have to start uh, using this car and put some miles on it. Thank you for watching and we will continue from here.